We want to manage growth better. Part of growing is just having really good, well-performing cafes. So, you know, to grow fast, you know, it's almost better to just slow it down a little bit and make sure everything is right. Like, things are going to take the, on their own life. Like, think you start something, it kind of takes on a life of its own. So you talk about a vision, you might have a vision, but then it just like grows into something else. The customers, the the business climate, the place you're in, the community, that all can develop what you actually have, how it works, right. you know? That's kind of, that's the unknown mystery of having a business, you know? It's kind of interesting. I mean, I would, my recommendation is don't take on too much stuff. You know, don't, just, don't have more employees than you can know and be personally like, hi, how are you, their name and what they do, where they live, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And don't have too many locations where you can't be. I mean, maybe you can. I mean, I know there are people, they do it. Like they, they probably have just a huge team. You need like super big team of people. Now that we have a bigger team and uh, that team has been great in terms of helping us grow. That's been amazing for us from the time we started when it was just my husband and I, now that we have like 10 other people that are just like us and all going the same direction. So, um, you know, it's I continue to love what I do. If, if you don't have fun at work every day, why bother working, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's my husband, by the way. That's my second half. Come in for a second. Okay. That's a Monica. Whatever you do, then just be consistent. Don't keep, like, morphing it all the time. Because whatever you've done, if people love you, they just, they start to identify and they will become your apostles. Yeah, that was sort of the main, and, and you know, I think the brand, like, staying with that idea. I think, and one, one, one thing I always tell people is, and I've seen a lot of different businesses come and go, I mean, along this path, the journey, is that, you know, it's like, at times it was like, wow, we should start brewing beer, or wow, you know, weed's becoming a thing, let's grow weed, you know, it's like, no, let's just keep, you know, let's keep on the, let's keep roasting coffee, let's make good coffee. And it helped us just keep it simple, and just keep, be persistent on that path of make a coffee. You know, our hope is that Sweetwater gets as big as it can be and still maintain the basis of how it started. And um, I think a lot of that is all the connection with the guests and the community. When you're growing a coffee business, it's really important to listen to your customers via either your own baristas or sitting in your shop and watching people interact or like get out there and like ask your customers to sit in on a panel and like, hey, will you taste these three new drinks? What do you like about them? What don't you like about them? But I think the most important part about um, listening to your customers is creating the spaces where you have that communication. And I don't, I don't think people get out there and ask the right questions to the right people. I think it's, it is really about asking questions to your customers and your baristas. We also monitor any kind of um, review sites like Yelp, Google My Business, um, and also our POS system uh, asks for a review at every transaction, so we monitor that as well. So we can immediately see if there's been an issue with a drink or, or a product, and then we can reach back out to the franchisee and just make sure. What's been really nice is that we have really passionate franchisees, and sometimes they're seeing those reviews before us, and they're on top of it. You know, they want to make sure that the product matches the quality and expectation that we have too. The quality of what we do, I think it's, it's essential because there's so many cafes out there. People are pretty educated now. Um, and your palate is educated. It's like you know when something's good and when it's not good. So then they're gonna tell people, wow, oh, you gotta go, the place is so good. If you contrast that to if you start scrimping on coffee to save a buck, you're saving maybe two cents in a cup. It's not worth it. So now you've got people saying, eh, it's okay, I think such and such place is better. That's not what I want. I want, I want people to say, we're the best. They tell five people and it sort of exponentially grows. So it's, it's worked out real well.
Ooh. Yeah, the competition thing. I mean, I'm always like, I'm not really worried about it, but I just think it's out there and everyone wants to get, like people see something and they're like, ooh, that looks good. I'll do that, you know? So, I mean, but you gotta have the love, Yeah. you know? Yeah. We don't want to follow in our competitors' footsteps. Uh, so we really like to uh, build a path of our own. And I think we found that to be uh, a, a big reason for our, our success up to now. So worry, keep an eye on. I think we, we really keep an eye on our competitors. I mean, we don't have a thousand stores and we don't have the resources that some of our competitors have, but there's some benefits for being smaller and being able to make decisions quicker and we're more nimble. And um, so we take advantage of that. I think it's possible to all coexist um, and to serve different peoples. Everybody wants their own special coffee experience. I also think a rising tide lifts all boats. And so if you have a successful business, you're gonna make the other businesses around you more successful. And I think that's pretty important when it comes to coffee culture and building culture. When you say something bad about another coffee shop as a barista, you might not think about it, but that person probably goes to that coffee shop. Um, and you're making them feel bad about that. And you might have just said something out of ego, but in reality, you might have also just lost a customer. As the business grows, people don't know this, but the balance sheet grows. That means sales are growing, you're making more money, but also bills are growing. And quarterlies come up, and so you really need to forecast. Um, it's not enough to just look at your bank account today. You need to think about where your bank account's gonna be in 30, 60, 90 days, and in as great a detail as possible, because while you're growing sales, you can actually run into a situation where you run out of money in four months. It's like, well, what happened? We were paying the bills two months ago and sales are higher. So I would say understanding cash flow and forecasting is vital as a business owner. You, you want to have at least, I mean, ideally two weeks of working capital. So whatever your sales are, for a month, half of that should always be sort of afloat in your account. Otherwise, you're gonna get stressed and freak out and bounce checks and you just can't. It's a bad spiral. For us, I think, how can we keep setting the example of how to do good? So maybe go try to get electric vans, solar roof, um, charge, you know, that kind of thing right away. And then just meet with more meetings with the farmers and try to get like really sustainable on that end too. And with the people we buy coffee from, that's the future for us. Yeah. And just try to keep making better coffee. Always try to make better coffee. Our unique beverage, which is our ginger lemon tea, we, we started that probably about seven or eight years ago but there's a whole huge market we haven't even tapped into. And certainly as every cafe gets established in their area, uh, at a certain time, we're gonna go out to those uh, local grocers, specialty grocers, and also uh, get the ready to drink product out there as well. So our bottled beverages are a great way to extend the brand beyond the cafe walls. I'm actually working on a project based on its potential partnership to launch a new product that would be have a larger and far, further reach than, than what I have. So we'll see if that happens, but that's one you know egg in one basket and I also am, am always trying to figure out how to grow. If that partnership doesn't happen, like I can't put all my attention into that because I also want to make sure that I'm always thinking about how to make this part grow. Working on a project for that potential partnership is helping me figure out a lot on how to, how to um, grow this part of the business, but I haven't cracked the code exactly yet. Looking back on my coffee career, and all the people I've ever worked for. The one thing that I wish they knew that they didn't know is that perfectionism isn't real. Um, failure is acceptable. And uh, yeah, it's just a long journey, you know? You just, you just gotta go fearlessly ahead. I always tell people being an entrepreneur is 
It's like uh, walking across a canyon at night. Because you want to get to the other side. In the morning, you look back in the daylight and you, you realize you walked across a rope over a very deep canyon. And you can't be afraid to keep going. You can't stop and go, oh my God, and freeze. So it, being an entrepreneur, a business owner, it is a very scary world. It's not for everybody. But if you're the right person for it, it's very rewarding. It's wonderful to be self-employed. Um, you can be creative. You're a leader. Um, you're going to get a lot of the credit. Um, it's, you know, it's super fun.